ho, 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 ho. Me, me like cookies and jokes. Me like to eat jokes. Oh, give me jokes. Hi, I'm Randall Allen Dunn. I write action thrillers that read like blockbuster movies. And I also teach on writing. Um, I have taught a few classes that I've put together about how to cover some basics and also some advanced areas of writing. And I'm going to share something with you today that's more of an advanced idea. And uh, in fact, it's something that a lot of established writers don't seem to grasp. And this is how to create story humor. I've written a book uh, based on a lesson that I've, that I've taught to several people, Making Fiction Funny, How to Create Story Humor, which is different from what you would think of as comedy. You know, we're not talking about stand-up comedy where everything that you write is rip-roaring funny. We're talking about how to make a story that is not comedy have some comedy or humor in it and for it to be natural, not something that you're forcing so that it, so that the reader can tell you're trying to make them laugh, but something that is genuinely, naturally funny. There are two components to humor, and I'm going to share those with you. So, what makes something funny? If you pick up the average best-selling book, and, you know, one that's not a comedy, you will find out that most writers don't know what makes anything funny. Even the funny writers can hardly ever figure out how you can be funny yourself. Humor is, is considered to be something that's elusive and mysterious, and nobody knows how to create it. Nobody. And uh, you just hope that it might magically appear in your story someday, and you simply need to recognize it when you see it happen. Baloney. It's the same way that a lot of people view writing. A lot of people view writing as something that just happens to writers. You just happen to have a story because the muse happens to descend on you, and then you just write this brilliant blockbuster all in one sitting. That's not how it happens. It happens the way anything else happens in life, any other job. You learn how to do it, you practice it, you get good at it, and then, and then it happens. Then it becomes very natural to you, and you don't even have to think about it. But when you first start, it's like learning how to play the piano or learning how to, or getting into an exercise program. It's hard work. And then once you get familiar with it and learn how to do it right, it becomes more natural and second nature to you. Okay, so humor is no different, uh, at least not when it comes to creating humorous characters and situations that will help make your story more entertaining. And when I researched the topic about writing humor, I found out that almost nobody could figure out or explain what makes something funny let alone how you can create it for yourself. But fortunately for you, I figured out how to do it. And even better, I'm going to share that with you. So let's get started. First, we're going to begin with a classic example of movie comedy. Uh, we're going to talk about a brief scene in the very middle of the classic action adventure film Raiders of the Lost Ark, which is, I certainly would think, and many people think, the best action adventure movie ever made. It is jam-packed with action from beginning to end, non-stop action. Yet, it also has some humor and some romance that are part of it that are natural as part of the story and that break up some of that non-stop action so that we can enjoy the story more and, and feel more, you know, that the characters are more endearing to us. Now, in the middle of the movie, there's a scene where the hero, Indiana Jones, is searching for his girlfriend, Marion, and she, because she disappeared while he was fighting off a band of local assassins trying to kill them. He calls out for her, and the crowd of spectators suddenly parts to reveal a new assassin, another guy, and this one is grinning as he wields this really heavy scimitar sword. And the assassin laughs, as he's demonstrating his fighting skill, he twirls a sword about in a really impressive display. Indiana Jones stares at him and prepares for a hand-to-hand -hand fight that will involve the assassin's deadly sword and Indiana Jones' own bullwhip. With a look of exhaustion and irritation, Indiana Jones reaches for his holstered gun and shoots the dangerous assassin in the face, ending the fight as he turns away to plan his next move. Was that funny or what? Well, 
Okay, now it is extremely funny. Um, it is it is a classic piece of comedy in a non-comedy film. But um, how did they do it? How was that funny? You know, because if you think about somebody coming in to tell you what happened and say, "Wow, you won't believe this." There, I just saw two guys facing off in the street. One of them had this huge scimitar sword, and the other guy just had a bull whip. And the guy with the scimitar was showing off his skills. And then the guy with the whip pulls out a gun and shoots him in the face. Isn't that hilarious? No, no, it's not really. It's a little disturbing. People would wonder if they should call the police. Um, because seeing a person gunned down in the street is not funny in and of itself. So how did the filmmakers make this otherwise morbid and disturbing incident into something that was funny for the story. There are two components of humor. It's made up of two components, contrast and commonality. Now, contrast is the primary component of humor. What makes us laugh in any humor situation is the contrast between what we expect and what actually happens. The bigger your contrast, the bigger the laughs. So remember this because this is the essence of creating humor. It is all about contrast. Another example of that to show how contrast works is the Princess Bride film. There's, uh, there are a couple of scenes that happen right next to each other toward the end of the film. And, uh, and here's, here's what happens. Now the Princess Bride is a uh, satirical fairy tale adventure story. And so it kind of takes all the fairy tale expectations that audiences have and turns them on, on, its, on their ear. So, in this one scene, we see an elaborate cathedral where a royal wedding is about to take place. Everything is exquisite and beautiful. The priest motions to everyone as he stands before them in his ornamented robes, looking somber as he prepares to initiate the ceremony. When he opens his mouth, we discover that he has an embarrassing speech impediment of baby talk as he preaches to the gathered crowd about mowage. He continues his annoying talk as the participants appear uncomfortable, trying to remain proper and take the wedding seriously. Meanwhile, the heroes, Wesley, Fezzik, and Inigo, break into the palace, intent on rescuing Princess Buttercup. Intent on rescuing Princess Buttercup from the unwanted marriage. In a corridor, they are confronted by guards who are led by the six-fingered man who murdered Inigo's father years ago. After disposing of the guards with his superior swordsmanship, Inigo challenges the six-fingered man, saying the words he is prepared to say for years. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. The six-fingered man crouches, preparing to do battle with the assassin then turns and runs for his life down the hall. Shocked, Inigo rushes to catch him and try to exact his vengeance. Now, both, this, these, both of these scenarios, with the, with the priest and with the six-fingered man, they're hilarious. Why? Because no one expected it. You know, unless you've already seen the movie, like many of us have, and you knew it was coming. But even so, it's still kind of funny. So, you can see that the, the, the film's director intuitively knows this. Whether they know how the mechanics of it or not, they just know this is going to be funny, okay? When when this guy starts talking about mowage and has you know this baby talk impediment, it's going to be really funny. Um, we know that he knows he knows this because um, there's a slow build up to this sudden surprising revelation that makes it funnier. Uh, we're we're focusing on the elaborate cathedral and there's this incredible beautiful fairy tale wedding going on. And then we zoom in very, very slowly to see the staunch features of a very serious and very respectable priest. And then he has the world's silliest speech impediment. You know, they're having a, a perfect and serious celebration, and the priest is leading the ceremony talking like Elmer Fudd. So this is a brilliant device because not only does it surprise us, which is a big element of humor. You know, there's that contrast and there's that sudden surprise that you just weren't expecting and they, they catch you and grab you. Uh, but it also creates ongoing humor. The humor keeps going because the wedding party and all the guests now have are forced to remain serious 
while they're listening to this baby talking priest. So he keeps going and everybody gets more and more uncomfortable having to listen to this because it just it is a complete contrast from what should happen. You expect it to be a nice, formal, serious wedding, and instead you've got Elmer Fudd. Another brilliant surprise is with Inigo's enemy, the Six-Fingered Man. The build-up to this hilarious moment is established early in the film because Inigo explains how he has this heartfelt quest to avenge his father's murder against the Six-Fingered Man. He recites exactly what he's going to say to his opponent before he takes his revenge one day. And so when we hear him say it in this scene, there's this really thick tension. And we're expecting a battle royal between Inigo and the Six-Fingered Man, the evil guy who murdered his father. We don't expect the Six-Fingered Man to turn tail and run. So humor is a surprise. The second component of humor is commonality. And for, for our uses, the word commonality simply means a shared perspective. So for something to be funny, the intended audience has to be able to relate to, the, to this experience. So that means they have to have enough in common with the story that they can get the joke. So what's funny to one audience is not necessarily funny to every other audience. So you have to know your audience. So a final example I want to give to you is from the film Office Space, which is a comedy and starts off with a hysterical scene. Um, on a busy commute to work, the interstate is packed with bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. Peter Gibbons is annoyed at this stop-and-start routine, and he becomes even more irritated as he sees an old man with a walker who's passing him on the sidewalk. So when he notices the left lane of traffic moving quicker, Peter makes plans to get over. He finds an opening and switches lanes just as the left lane's progress comes to a screeching halt right in front of him. And so once more he's sitting there stuck on the road, making no progress at all. But now the right lane is starting to move along at a steady clip. So Peter checks over his shoulder and he prepares to switch back. And so once more he successfully changes lanes. But just as he's ready to celebrate his victory, the right lane's traffic also grinds to a halt, and he must slam on the brakes once more. And then he sees the left lane's traffic speeding up again, and he's ready to hit something. And then he squints past the long line of cars, and he's vexed even more as he spots the old man with the walker all the way down the block. Now, this opening scene of the movie Office Space is incredibly funny to anybody who has experienced heavy rush hour traffic. It can be equally funny to anybody who has felt the frustration of waiting in a long line or is faced with a, a no-win situation where Murphy's Law just takes over and it ruins their day. Most everybody has felt this way at some point in life where they feel like they're trying to make progress, but they're barely moving, you know? Commonality is that shared experience. We get the joke because we all understand this experience. We share the same understanding. Now, commonality is another critical element that makes the scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark so funny. Up until the time that film came out, moviegoers had a shared experience of expecting how a movie hero reacts when he's confronted with an enemy who has a sword. Okay? In this case, uh, the aspect of commonality is doubled because you know, as an audience, we commonly expect that a movie hero is going to engage in physical combat, which will draw out the scene and make it longer and have more fighting and all this stuff. Um, and at the same time, we know that the common person, a normal person like us in real life, we would be practical enough to use our gun. If you got a gun there, why bother fighting with someone? Just, just shoot him. That just didn't happen. You know, you, they have a big fight in, in movies. So when Indiana Jones does exactly the opposite of what a, a typical movie hero would do, and instead does what we would do as a normal person, then everybody's taken by surprise because um, there's, there's two le levels of commonality. The commonality of we all expect this from a movie and the commonality of but we would do it like this. Well, then he does what we would do and it takes everyone by surprise and results in a classic piece of comedy uh, in a non-comedy film. And that's what you want. You want to take your story, whatever it is, romance, um, suspense, action, horror, you know, 
mystery, whatever it is, you want to take your story and create some natural story humor that can develop within it so that it breaks things up a little bit more, it makes it more enjoyable, it makes people just love it more. They'll love your characters more, they'll love your story more, they'll enjoy it more. Because humor is something that, you know, when we laugh, it puts us at ease, it makes us comfortable. So if you can make your, your readers even more comfortable with your story, that is a win-win for you, your potential agents, your potential editors. Everybody will be very happy if your story can help make people laugh or at least smile. So um, if you are interested in learning more, and if you like videos like this, please like and subscribe. But if you're interested in, in learning the full details of how humor works in a story, then get Making Fiction Funny. You can get it online at Amazon or barnesandnoble.com. And it is, uh, it's going to just give you the tips so that you know how to create humor when you want to. And we've gone through some of the, the, the basic secrets here, but the book goes into more details of how satire works, how to create clowns and straight men, how to create a, a funny situation, how to do all of it. So if you're interested, check out the book. But thanks for watching. I'm Randall Allen Dunn. Have a great day.